Hello, I'm back again. Hopefully this is working. Um, the orientation of my phone just wasn't up around the right way. Let me just check it this time. Sorry for the um, technical glitch. Let's just see if this is working this time. I don't know, sometimes I, d I don't do anything different and it, um, and it works and other times things like this just happen. So um, here we are. Thanks for joining me. It's Anne here from Domesplicity and I'm just popping in for this um, short live. Hi Janelle, I'm back again. Thanks for being here. Um, just popping in today to give you a few tips on how to decide what to keep and what to get rid of. And I know that can be um, a hard task for some people, especially when there's um, sentiment attached to it and I know very well what that's like. My mother passed away uh, seven years ago, just over seven years ago and some of this stuff that I'm going to go through is hers. In that is also stuff that belonged to my grandmother that she held on to, my mum held on to. I also have stuff that belonged to my late mother-in-law, my husband's mother and she was an avid crafter and has had the most beautiful things. And also my late auntie, um, she left me a whole bunch of sewing stuff too. So, you know, I was just inundated with um, stuff, you know, trying to decide what to keep and what to, to get rid of. So I'll just show you um, what I've got to work with and how I'm going to approach this. So I'll just... Um, so this is my craft, I'm in my office and I've got a craft area as well as um, an office area. So I have these um, shelf, uh, these drawer systems and what I tried to do when I set it up was have all the um, fabric in here, uh, different things to use for fabric. There's more fabric up there and you can see that it's all just kind of jammed in there. I've got things like buttons and beads and ribbons and twine, um, different kinds of craft supplies. And then I've got like a shelf system down there that I've used for different types of craft things. This is what I'm dealing with. I've got a basket and these two big tubs. I've also got other things in here like um, scissors and glues and stuff like that and then around here I've got um, six baskets for different sorts of papers and pens and and different things so I've got to try and fit all of that into these areas so it I might think of it as a, a mammoth task but I'm not going to um, think of it like that what I want to do is just quickly go through that and the first thing that I suggest is um, setting yourself a timer. Like this is, um, I would consider a big job. So, you know, um, you've got a plan for it. That's what I like about in our group that we have um, our weekly goal setting um, feature on a Monday where you can set yourself some goals. So one of those goals would be to sort through um, your craft supplies once you've got them sorted, then you can take your time. And um, I've got two baskets here, one's for keep and one's for donate. I'm not going to worry about selling anything. You know, um, these things aren't worth very much and they'd probably be really handy to somebody. But by the time you advertise them and take pictures and then wait for the people to turn up, I'd rather just donate them because I know that um, the store that's... Uh, Selling them is getting a donation for their services, plus the people buying them are buying them because they need them, and they want them, and they're getting them at a good price. So that's my way of thinking when I just donate things. Um, yeah, so um, you can probably imagine, or guess by looking at what I've got here, that I'm not... Um, I'm not a minimalist by any um, stretch of the imagination. I don't, I don't um, personally believe in it. Like, I would rather have a house or a home that's well organised 
and free from clutter than one that doesn't have any sentimental items um, in it. You know, I, I like having photos on the wall. I like having a few knickknacks around, um, things that just remind me of different um, situations and things with the kids, you know, things that the kids have made me over the years. So that's just me. So um, I would also like that with my craft supplies. Like if I feel like I want to make over something or reuse something or repurpose something in the home, I know that I've got everything here. I don't have to rush out and you know spend ten dollars on a spray can of glue or a, you know go and buy a whole bunch of stuff. I just know that it's here and I can always um, I've always got it just just to quickly make something or make over a project if I want to. So I would prefer to have that. In saying that, the amount of fabric that I've got to sort through, I'm not sure that I'm going to use in a million years, but. I'm going to just look at the fabric and see if I like it and um, once I've got the basket and I start sorting it into the um, drawers then I'll I might have another cull um, but you know <clears throat> bits of fabric come in handy for so many things and it's so darn expensive so I would rather just have a good variety of different colors and different textures and things like that for um, projects that um, I want to use so um, let's go let's get started um, just a few things though um, about I'm just going to put the camera in here it's a bit hard to kind of do it hands-free there hope everyone can see it's not um okay um yeah it's the first thing i guess to think about when you're going through these things is at the end of the day it's just stuff you know um we can attach so much emotion to some of these things like oh i can remember when my mum made me a dress out of this fabric i need to hang on to the fabric you know if you look at it just as stuff it makes it easier to part with also don't look at the monetary value of it as well because if you're looking at the monetary value of it that that stuff you're letting that stuff own you not you own the stuff so whether you pay ten, twenty, thirty dollars for it, you know, don't even think of the monetary value. Think of the the fact that you're going to have more time, more room. You're going to feel better about your home and your life, and and just have less weight and less clutter in your life. So um, that's that's the um, the main thing that I use to decide what to keep and what to throw away. Um, it's just stuff at the end of the day. Whether I use it now in two years or five years if I've got the room I'll keep it if it's taking up too much room well then I'll get rid of it but the first thing to do is to set yourself a timer now I'm not going to allow myself any more than 30 minutes here on this um, broadcast so I'll see how much I get done but um, it's just a matter of I'll get this first basket when they when people say you've got to be ruthless you know having a short um, setting yourself a short time frame um, allows you to be ruthless you know just handle the object say to yourself am I going to keep this am I going to get rid of it and then just do it um, I know it can be really difficult sometimes um, when it when there is a lot of emotion attach, attached to it and sometimes you might find yourself you know being short of breath or um, you might feel um, emotional like you're going to start crying just just remember that it's stuff just take a deep breath and then keep going because the end result is just so much better than you know for me to have these two big tubs here would drive me crazy rather than the half an hour that I spend going through it good morning Tracy how are you oh yeah well I'm <laughs> I am, I'm down here, I just thought I'd 
keep this space um, free that you can see um, what I'm decluttering. I'm trying to get it, be able to um, get there. <laughs> Is that better? Um, yeah, it was a bit hard trying to get the camera to focus on um, capturing both me and, and what I was doing. I hope that's a bit better. Thank you. Um, so yeah, if you find yourself getting a little bit upset, you know, just take a deep breath and know, just keep telling yourself the end result is going to be so much better and you're going to be able to find what you need straight away and you'll feel so much better. That feeling is going to far outweigh that short um, moment of uncomfortability that you might experience when there is too much emotion attached to it. So um, if you do find that, <laughs> thank you. Um, if you do find that it's just, um, you know, it's just too difficult. What I also tell myself about sentimental items too is I can take a, a picture of it, a photo of it and keep it whether I put it in an album or not. But I also tell myself that I can still have the memory of that item without having the actual item. Like I've passed on so many things that belong to my mother and the kids over the years. I've still got that memory in my mind, but I don't have the actual object taking up so much room. So that's just another way um, that you can look at it. You can also repurpose those items into other things. You know, like I've been hanging on to some of the kids' um, baby clothes, you know, so that um, and their school uniforms over the years so that I can make a memory quilt. So they're just all put away in a box ready for um, that moment when they finish school. But <coughs> um, that's just another way you can approach it too. So um, let me get started. I'm just going to go go through everything. Now th this may seem um, funny to some people, but this was a milk pail that belonged to my grandfather and grandmother and in, back in the days when they first moved to Budrum from their dairy farm their milk used to be delivered in this and I can remember being you know four years old and we'd be so excited to see the milkman come we'd run out with this bucket and we'd um, you know get it filled with milk and my grandfather would pay the milkman so that's that's a, an old baked enamel, enamel tin and it's just you know just too precious to um, part with at this stage I've got a spot up here I'm going to put it here now instead of putting it in the basket I'm just going to put it up on my shelf <coughs> and I might put some dried flowers or something in it um, or use it for something but um, to get started these are some um, embroidery hoops that um, my um, auntie had with her um, embroidery machine I've got the embroidery machine. I just don't think that I'm going to have the time to use it. It's just something that she left me. So um, <coughs> actually I'll, I'll put them with um, the embroidery machine. This is an embroidery hoop. I'll probably, I do like doing embroidery so I'm going to keep that. The blue basket is for keeping <coughs> and the green is for donating. Uh, this is a little... Um, quilted or patchwork um, bag that my auntie made but I, that I found in her things and I absolutely adore cherries so you know that could be a nice little library bag or something so I'll put that in with my bags upstairs so I'll keep that um, here's all the instructions for um, my auntie's machine so I'll put that with that now here is a whole bag of um, already done um, quilting squares, you know, that my auntie did. Now how, how great are they just to sort of whip up into a cushion or something, you know, and I love doing um, quilting and sewing and they're already done so I'll be able to find room for them, keep that. Here's a large piece of um, cotton that's got a lovely um, shine in it. You know, if you were to go and buy a couple or a couple meters of backing fabric for a quilt, you know, it'd just cost you a fortune. So 
um, I'll keep that. Oh, there's some more um, things for my auntie sewing machine. Now, I made this. This is bunting that I made for our wedding. Um, there's two lots. And I made it because I had like purple and green uh, themed wedding. You know, what should I do with it? Should I get rid of it? Um, I don't know. Maybe I could put it up around the office, but it's not really in my color scheme. Oh. You know, I can make it again. I've got pictures of it. Donate. Here's a small bit of um, fabric that's green and gold, which is probably for Christmas. Donate. I'm not sure about that color, whether I'd use that for anything. Donate. It's a nice bit of fabric with um, rulers on it. I'd probably keep that. Same as this basket um, weave fabric. Donate. Very small piece of silver. Donate. Uh, I've used that before. It's a white with gold star. I'd keep that. Some more Christmas type fabric. Christmas fabric's really good for gifts and things. Um, not really sure about that. Donate. Oh, and here's a crocheted top hand towel. They always come in handy. Can never have enough of those, so I'll keep that. So you can see what I'm doing. You have to be ruthless. Um, here's a nice large piece of um, butterflies and, and ladybugs. It's quite a big piece. I'll keep that. Nice big piece of red fabric. The larger pieces are always good. It's a nice piece of um, um, peacock feather fabric. Now, I did a peacock themed um, bedroom makeover for my daughter years ago. That would have been handy at the time. I'll keep that. It's a large piece. And this is a nice piece of um, blush pink roses on... Um, peonies I think on black that's pretty and that's just a small piece of red I probably won't use that here's a bit of um, paisley print that looks nice an orange kind of paisley print I wouldn't keep that that's quite nice it's got like a gold um, gold pattern on it floral that's only a small piece, I wouldn't keep that. This is a, quite a large piece of pink. And this, this is unusual, it's kind of like a glittery sky colour. I don't think I'd keep that. So that's done. That's one basket done already. So you can see that I'm blitzing through it. Here's a... Um, canvas oh, it's actually three in there you know I'm always um, picking up these sort of things for the kids you know my daughter wants to paint something um, is she going to do it now am I going to do it now no not probably but um, it doesn't take up much room it's only thin I can just um, stick that down the side here and we can use it when we need to it's they're really good those canvas boards for decorating a wall when you just wrap fabric around them so for some of this fabric it'll look good um, buttons I love buttons I've got some dried lavender there <coughs> still smells um, strong but I don't think I'll keep it I've got some other fresh lavender I'll keep the buttons because I've got a button um, container here's a whole bunch of um, bulldog clips which are good for quilting but office supplies as well I'll keep them because we've got um, office supplies more bulldog clips um, some zips some little um, rats I think they call them little stars I, I use them and a zip just a random zip I'll probably donate that keep the stars and then there's some sewing machine pieces I'll that with the sewing machine stuff now look at all this fabric I love gingham so um, I don't mind having a few 
varieties of gingham in the stash. That's just um, burgundy type stars that I probably wouldn't keep. Some plain colours I probably wouldn't keep. There's a nice um, like Cupid star print. That's quite nice. And this is quite pretty too. A um, little birdhouse. So I think, no, I don't think I'd, I'd use that. More gingham. Uh, I remember getting this fabric as a giveaway um, or as a swap. I did. I was involved in a swap, so I do quite like it. And it's got some um, cute buttons in it as well. Quite nice. So here's some um, plain colours. You know, if you're making lots of little squares, you could probably use them. I probably won't. I'm just donating them all. So much good stuff in here, though. Oh, look at this. All this cotton. Now, I do have a, a section in, in my storage for cotton. So I'll incorporate um, all of that. Because cotton's expensive and you know if I've got too many greens or too many reds I'll um, I'll get rid of it I think these are from my late mother-in-law she was so used to be so organized um, but look at all these buttons now I'm I tend to um, like the vintage buttons these are pretty much all plain coloured ones. I probably wouldn't keep them. I probably wouldn't keep them either. Oh, lots of nice little pearl ones in this slot. I'll keep them. And oh, lots of little assortment of gold and stripes in there so I'll keep them as well some lovely little things look at this I think my late mother-in-law made this a little um, needle book for all your needles that's cute I'll keep that oh looks like there's another thing of needles in there and then she's got this little cutter and little quick and pick in this little container a little folder I'll keep that oh This is my collection of my grandmother's um, vintage buckles, belt buckles. My nanny used to make all her own belts to match her dresses. So, you know, that's a little bit precious to part with. And I've always thought of doing something with them. What? I don't know. I'm going to have to um, think of a project. I did see a couple projects on how you can use um, belt buckles. So I'll look into that again and start doing something with all of these things. But um, that's, that's basically it. It's just, you know, about going through all these things. Oh, we've got, we've got to see this. My um, late mother-in-law was an um, avid embroiderer and she made the most beautiful things. But, and like I said, she was so organised. And I love embroidery, so I'm going to be um, doing a lot more of it. But look at this. Isn't that just gorgeous? She's got everything organised in there. Not one, but two of all the different coloured embroidery threads all uh, mixed in together. There seems to be a whole lot more in here as well. Um, different colours. Like, oh, there's so many in there. I'm just going to donate that. This looks like a little um, teddy bear project that she started. I'll donate that. 
uh, some felt. I'll donate that as well. I don't. I have got bits and pieces of felt, so um, I don't really need that much. But it just goes on and on. Um, a lot of those other things in there are just, um, you know, like the um, the inside of um, cushions and stuffing for projects. Um, This is something else. You know, when <clears throat> back in the day, women, when they were um, watching TV, they'd just sit there and, and make these um, granny square, crocheted granny squares. And my late mother-in-law did that. You know, I've got a whole bunch upstairs too that my, um, my nana made. So, you know, do you donate them or do you um, repurpose them? And that's what I'm going to do is repurpose them into... Um, something that we can use and remember hi Karen yes great idea thank you Karen's just said to put all the um, buckles in a photo frame and hang them that's a great idea um, I would I want to do that that's great I actually think now that you mentioned that I think I might have seen them with ribbon like different colored ribbon threaded through and then it varies so it's like an actual piece of art I'm going to check that out, and if I find it, I'll share it. But that's thanks for reminding me, Karen. So yeah, even more um, granny squares. I can um, donate them, but I know you know these little things. I just have to. That'll take take me less than an hour just to sew them together, and we've just got a nice little um, knee rug for for winter. Um, another little bit of gingham. I'm not sure that looks like a dark green. I'll probably donate that. Lots of ribbons and um, I, I like ribbons, so that's a nice Christmas one to wrap Christmas presents. Lots more ribbon. So what, what have we been at? I can't see what the time is to see how long I've been at it, but um, you can see that I'm not thinking too long about it. Um, with the donate um, pile, I'll just put that all in a bag and put it in, a, in the car straight away. Next time I'm going to um, drop my son off at school, I'll uh, put it in the donation bin. Um, with this keep stuff now, I'm going to um, slowly go through like with the fabric, I know the fabric drawers need to be um, reorganized and refolded so I'll be able to easily incorporate that fabric and just find the homes for the ribbon. Um, and when I'm putting the, putting the ribbon away, for example, if I've got a roll of, say, this or similar, I'll donate it. So um, I'm going to make that my goal this week um, to do that, to finish off these two boxes and... Um, Thanks, Karen. Um, I'm going to make that a goal. I'm going to put it in today's post about my goals for the week. And I will come back and um, on Friday and show you pictures that I've done it, um, mainly for myself to um, set myself a goal that's achievable and will um, free up space, make me more organised. We've freed up space in the shed because all this stuff was in the shed for so long and and it is hard when your parents first pass away. You don't want to be um, thinking about sorting out their belongings and things that meant a lot to them. And, you know, do you think, you know, will you feel guilty for getting rid of it? So my late mother-in-law and aunt have been gone for a couple of years. And like I said, my mother was um, seven years ago. So um, it is that little bit easier. And it's all about now making um, what what I have worked for me um, the best. My mum's not going to mind. You know, my mum, if anything, would say, oh, what are you hanging on to that for? So um, that's the voice that I have in my head um, all the time. So if you have any questions about um, working out what to keep and what to get rid of, you know, just feel free to ask me. But, you know, set yourself a timer, half an hour. Um, here, keep it contained in a basket so you don't have stuff um, spread all over the area. 
I know this little basket I can just sort of incorporate um, as I go. If I do half an hour every day, it'll all be done. And I want to thank you for joining me today. And um, like I said, ask me any questions and I'll let you know how I go um, on Friday and show you all the after pictures. So um, thanks again and keep going. The theme of the fortnight is K is for keep. So keep going, keep motivated, keep positive. Uh, if you want to organize your life, do these little things um, every day, every week, and don't be um, disappointed if you don't. If something, something comes up, just keep going and you'll get there in the end. I want to thank you for joining me today and I'll catch you again um, in the group soon. Bye for now.